A Strategy of Power. In our struggle for libertarian socialism, the inability of social movements to maintain political power is a vulnerability that must be addressed. Fluctuations in power have to be mitigated in order for revolutionary strategy to succeed. Otherwise, any political gains made through work and struggle will remain at risk of potential crises, pressures, and attacks. The abilities and determination of people working towards social revolution is not enough on its own to bring about societal change, because capitalist strength at any given moment will always be superior. Revolutionary strategy requires that the work keep going, beyond a single event. The effort must be maintained. It is through this perseverance that a new paradigm can be created that does not disadvantage individuals for lacking a particular set of strengths. Capital as strength. While the oppressed people of the world are weakened by the inhumane force of capital, the people holding power defend a system that prioritizes strengths. Capital is the pinnacle of strength in our society, and capitalism is the ideology of the strong. The ruling class argues that wealth should always be able to overcome the opposition of any single person, group, or social movement. The capital to build a giant skyscraper, or incarcerate someone for life, this is strength under capitalism. The bombing of innocent civilians by military forces, the murder of unarmed civ citizens by police, this is the muscle of capital. Today, those holding power are strong enough to use any form of confrontation as proof of their legitimacy. They justify their power through displays of force. There are no particular interactions the ruling class has to avoid. Against the stark contrast of their brutal superiority, the weaknesses of our movements inadvertently transform their strength into power. When we confront their forces directly, they have the opportunity to demonstrate that their hold on power is insurmountable. In this system, only some people have the means to act in powerful ways, because it's only through fear and precarity that the superior strength of capital becomes power. A strategy of strength is not concerned with reducing threats in a general way. After being brutally and violently defeated by capital, people are afraid, and they feel inferior. They may abandon what seems like a hopeless struggle. Under capitalism, nothing is safe. Everything is threatening. This is its power. They threaten our livelihoods and the well-being of our families and friends. By preserving the daily struggle to survive, capitalists ensure social movements remain weak. We cannot do our work because we have to do their work. We have to spend our time strengthening the ruling class's ability to repress us. It's only by preserving a society where inequality means powerlessness that so few can hold the power over so many. Sustaining power in social movements. Since capitalism's power is derived from demonstrations of force, like police brutality, evictions, and layoffs, it is not tenable. Strength alone does not sustain power. Bodybuilders are not marathon runners. The strong man needs to lift something in an instant, requiring a lot of power. But it is impossible to sustain that kind of exertion for a significant amount of time. Much like social movements working towards societal change, the effort of a distance runner lasts longer. This means that the amount of strength required at any one moment is low. However, it also means that the window of time for mistakes is significantly larger. As in endurance sports, and contrary to those who prefer to force the most amount of output into a single moment, our success in revolutionary efforts is not instantaneously apparent. Political power is inherently unstable and requires, requires popular participation to reinforce it. 
there's no way for us to defeat the muscle flexing violence of the US government or global capitalism with our own brand of socialist strength. Unlike power, strength is reactionary. It's decontextualized from history and needs boogeymen to give it purpose. So the strength of the ruling class is acutely employed on dissidents, minorities, and the working class. This villainization makes the politics of strength maladapted to inclusivity. Additionally, the need to continually justify power through iterative spectacle is a capitalist practice that radicals cannot ethically replicate. So while the reactivity of the status quo is something that we can exploit, we will not successfully do this by attempting to match their forces blow for blow. The liberation of the oppressed cannot be realized through brute force. A truly revolutionary movement has to continue to exert itself steadily over time, creating an overall effect, as opposed to a long-term effect, which is attained and recognized sometime in the future. An overall effect is presently discernible. Social movements must confront capitalism with power because the ruling class has a monopoly on expedient displays of strength. Building our personal strength through self-improvement is also an insufficient strategy, since this alone only perpetuates inequality within our own cause. We are fighting against an oppressive system, and we cannot defeat it by reproducing its faith in strong individuals. Our power must be gener generated differently. We reject the notion that power is a reward for the strongest among us. In order to negate capitalist strength as a means to power, individuals have to commit to building collective power and refuse to focus solely on succeeding in the isolated struggles. Sustained power cannot be produced by a single person. It requires a multiplicity of individuals each of them bringing their own consciousness of the current social and historical situation. In this way, popular participation informs the movement overall, allowing for the development of a specific but dynamic strategy of power. Such an approach coordinates the varied and disparate strengths of the participants who, on their own, could only symbolically confront capitalism. Since power is strength over time, it, in contrast to the repeated application of torque that capitalists are able to put on a situation through threats of violence and demonstrations of wealth, revolutionaries can employ the power of collaboration to steadily grind down and delegitimize the power of capital, avoiding interactions that allow the ruling class to use their strength. The addition of time as a factor in the development of power addresses capacity issues within the revolutionary cause. In social movements, participation ebbs and flows. This occurs at the personal level, but also at the organizational and societal levels. As they relate to political power, fluctuations are bad. But on an individual level, they're unavoidable. An effective strategy of power acknowledges this and attempts to nullify the changing input by selecting and maintaining an organizational output that resists the allure of short-term projects, which risk overexerting individuals. This means refuting the delusion that we are participating in a singularly important event in the revolution. Our efforts do not need glorification. They need perpetuation. The revolutionary organization and militant responsibility. In order for a strategy of collaborative power to be successful, it needs disciplined maintenance and commitment. Developing the theory and program for how to sustain power within social movements should be the task of a revolutionary organization. Through trust and assumed responsibility on the part of its militants, such an organization gains agency. It intentionally cultivates the strengths of militants to confront immediate demands, but without the fantasy that a single militant could possibly be strong enough to warrant abandoning a strategy of power. Since employing a strong tactic without strategic support from others 
would be met with a superior show of force from the ruling class, militants have to train and educate themselves together. They have to learn and develop theory capable of putting pressure on the system, while at the same time rejecting the shock and awe tactics of the strong. The strategic benefit of a specific organization that knows how to use its strengths to augment and maintain political power is that it does not deplete the power of social movements by exerting strength for expedient results. The coordinated implementation of the strengths of militants also distinguishes the potential power of collectivized freedom from that of the capitalists and of other less organized revolutionary tendencies. A specific and revolutionary organization is the only way to address shortcomings in the building and subsistence of political power amongst the oppressed. Through personal responsibility and self-discipline, militants can become stronger individuals, and rather than go after capitalism directly, they can strategically employ their efforts toward greater collaboration over time. The organization does not, however, alleviate any of the direct responsibility of militants. The realization of popular power inevitably depends on the commitment of militants, not only to do the work of getting personally stronger, but also to follow the organizational strategy regarding when, where, and how to use their strengths.